me tell you about a society which had bigger masjids than you had, which had bigger scholars than you had, which had bigger Darul than you had. This was Muslim Spain. It had far bigger masjids than you had. Qurtuba, in the height of its flowering, had over 600 masjids. And recently, a couple of years, 19 of us from this masjid went to Qurtuba, where there were 600 masjids. We found one, and that was closed. Why? What happened? Because these were people who forgot Allah, and Allah made them forget themselves. And you look at the scholars of Spain. Who were the scholars of Spain? They were the likes of Ibn Hazm. They were the likes of Imam Qurtubi. They were the likes of Ibn Abdul Barr. They were the thinkers like Ibn Sina, Ibn Rushd. These were people who were the backbone of Islamic learning. There were no greater scholars than these in the history of Islam. And in the loose, Spain was built on the model of Medina. And as long as their focus remained on Medina, they flourished. But when their focus turned toward the dunya, then that same progressive society sank because the Muslims were not created for the dunya. The Muslims were not created for the dunya. The Muslims were created for the hereafter. We are Abdullah. We are the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the highest status that we can reach is that we remain the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This very society, Spain, when their own people their focus became the dunya, that every single person was concerned about himself. He was concerned about his own kursi. And the narrations mentioned that the rulers of Spain, what they would do, that the Muslims would actually make treaties with the Christians and they would fight against their own Muslims. They would fight against their own Muslims. And really these were the Abu Rigal's of that time. And throughout history, you see, you will find Abu Rigal. Do you know who Abu Rigal was? Do you know who Abu Rigal was? Abu Rigal was a man who lived in Taif. And when Abraha, the Yemeni Christian governor, came to destroy the Kaaba, Abu Rigal told him, Look, I'll show you where the Kaaba is as long as you give me a few pounds. So Abraha agreed. When Abu Rigal reached the outskirts of Makkah, he died. And what the Arabs would do, they would pelt his grave with stones because he was a man who was ready to sell his religion and his people for a dollar and a dime. And until today, the Arabs say, if they see a person of a deceptive nature, they say, Abu Rigal. He's Abu Rigal. And these were the Abu Rigal of that time. And one place after the other fell in Muslim Spain. One place after the other. Besides, until there was only one place left, and that was Granada. And Granada fell 50 years after the rest of Spain. Until Abu Muhammad, he drew a treaty with the Christians on the condition that he allowed them to take over on the condition that they would not persecute the Muslim, that they would not forcefully convert the Muslims, that they would not remove the Muslim from their post. And when the Christians came in, the first thing they did, they reneged on their promise. And when they entered the Alhambra palace, have you seen the Alhambra palace? Wallahi, when you look at the Alhambra palace, the eyes marvel at the architecture and artistry. It is an amazing palace. And throughout the palace, you will see one word, La Ghaliba illallah. That dominance is only for the sake of Allah. Dominance is only for the sake of Allah. Where are those people who wrote La Ghaliba illallah? Where are those people? See, La Ghaliba, the engraving remained on the walls, but the reality of it was removed from the hearts. And the reality is that the Alhambra palace, to a great degree, encompasses the decline of the Muslim Ummah. Whilst the mud hut in which Umar ibn Khattab lived embodies the spirit of Islam. And really, when these Christians, they walked into the Alhamra, they found the highest place that they could find. And they erected a crucifix there. And when Abu Muhammad saw this, he began to cry. He began to cry and his mother rebuked him. She said, why are you crying like a woman when you couldn't defend it like a man? Why are you crying like a woman when you couldn't defend it like a man? And this is our state today, really. We whinge about everything. We blame everybody else besides ourselves. We blame the Christians, we blame the Jews, we blame everybody else. But it's one person we don't blame, it's us. We even blame time. The Zamana Yesai. As Arabic poet says, he said, zamanana wa zamanina aibun siwana. He said, we find fault in time, but the reality is that the fault lies within us. And if there was any one fault in time, if there was any one fault in time, it is that it has to carry the likes of me and you. That's the only fault with time.
Do not be like those who forgot Allah and Allah made them forget themselves.